Alrighty, what's up, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel if you're familiar with us and if you aren't, welcome to you as well. I'm Jonathan with Boston Collectors and today we'll be unboxing and reviewing Echo by Hot Toys from the animated series The Bad Batch. Starting with the cigar band, we have an all new look for this line featuring two different shades of red, a slight appearance of terrain in the background, as well as the figure information. In standard fashion, we also have the silver embossed Star Wars logo. Found throughout the rest of the cigar band, we have the figure information on the right side, as well as an extra posing idea on the left. As for the back of the packaging, we have the standard legal information, warnings, flagship store locations, and information regarding the figure. Before we dive into the art box, we have the main photo featuring Echo with his helmet on. Looks like this time we have the Star Wars logo beneath the packaging. Now that we're able to dive in, Hot Toys added an art card featuring both Echo and Hunter. While Hunter was announced first, we're still waiting for his arrival. On this channel, our goal is to help you figure out if these are pieces worth having in your collection through cinematic footage and unbiased opinions. If that's something you're interested in and you're enjoying what you see so far, do us a favor by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Let's go ahead and get started. Beginning with Echo's right arm, this is equipped on the figure right out of the box. We have the computer interfacing arm, otherwise known as a scomp link. With it, we have 360 degrees of articulation on the arm peg, as well as weathered effects. If you happen to have Cody in your collection and you heard arm peg, don't worry. The engineering on this figure is a lot better than his. I never had to worry about the arm pieces falling out during any of the posing either. Moving on to the utility arm, it's as simple as sliding the piece onto the arm peg. With it, there's a pre-equipped relax hand matching the bronze finish and gold accents found on the forearm. It looks similar to C-3PO's design and feature raised detailing in the palm of the hand. The articulation of the arm isn't limited either, but we'll share more on that soon. For now, the utility arm features a two-peg system. One for the swap out hand and one to socket into the arm. The extra wrist pegs in the box can swap out with this wrist peg in case you have an accident. The trigger fingers share the same amount of details and have a nice flexible feel to it. Since we're here, the blaster pistol is relatively basic. There's nothing different here outside of the previous releases. Getting back on topic with the utility arm, Hot Toys included a piston accessory to extend Echo's reach. Simply socket the hand in the right side, attach it to the arm, and you're all set. I love the detailed weathering and rustic appearance of the piston. As a side note, this piece isn't retractable. Next, we have the manipulator arm. This is sharing the same bronze colored appearance and gold color accents as the utility arm. While it looks cool, there aren't any articulated pieces to this arm though. For a pop of color and detail, there's a blue colored scope on the highest limb. Moving on, we have the jackhammer attachment featuring a retractable function. This is a pretty massive piece, but it doesn't add too much additional weight to the figure as you'd think. The paint applications are amazing as always and give a sense of depth to the overall piece. On the bottom of the jackhammer, we have raised projections featuring an additional layer of separation. As mentioned before, this piece features a retractable function and can only extend as far as you see here. There are so many details and so much depth that makes it look really awesome. Hot Toys also included a grasper arm with articulated pincers. While the piece might appear heavy, it doesn't add too much extra weight to the figure. Keep in mind how you place the detachable piece back on the arm. For continuity, follow the lines on both pieces. The pincers are very durable and have a wide range of articulation. It might feel like you'll break the pieces, but try to be careful and adjust them slowly. Once you've found the right pose, you can play around and see what fits best for you. With 
With this arm, there's an attachment included for extended reach. Remove the pincer piece and slot the extension in its place. After, add the pincer to the opposite end and you're set. It isn't the best piece since I found mine leaning over a lot, but it's a cool accessory if you plan to pose it in a lower position. Or with a little imagination, a grenade launcher. <laughs> For the left arm, we have a neutral hand on the figure right out of the box. These are always great to have and can be used in multiple scenarios. I'm just glad it isn't exaggerated. We also have a trigger finger included for the left hand too. Lastly, as far as hands go, we have a pointing gesture for the left hand. We can actually use this quite a bit since Echo's using cybernetics. Either that or just commanding other troops. The military backpack's got a hefty look to it without the added weight, but first let's talk attachments. Both antennae are die cast and can slot into the backpack. There's no way to get this wrong considering Hot Toys separated the shapes for both inserts. Simply follow the correct antenna and key it into the backpack. It does add a little more height to the figure, but not too much where he can't fit into your display. As for the paint application, it matched the armor weathering and complement Echo's subtle yellow markings on his portrait. Like all the clones previously released, it features a magnetic system. Altogether, Echo's ready to hit the battlefield and demands attention in your display. As for the final accessory included with the figure, we have the base, including a metallic nameplate featuring Echo's name. On top, we have a textured sticker covering the lower base. This includes both Echo's helmet and the logo for the animated series. It's got a premium feel to it, and you don't have to take off the backing of the sticker if you don't want to. If you plan to use it, secure it to the base with the crotch holder included. Considering Echo isn't using a jetpack, nor flying with his military backpack, it's okay to go without a flight pole. Beneath the sticker is a standard Venator class base with a darker color. Lastly, feel free to pair Echo with other accessories that aren't included, like a grenade. He's also capable of holding a hollow projector. Have him scomp into the hollow table or simply using it in your display as well. With both trigger hands, he can dual wield pistol blasters as well. Granted, his trigger finger isn't long enough to reach around the trigger of a carbine, sniper, or rocket launcher. You could make it work though. He'd also look pretty cool with a rocket launcher in hand as well. Before we move on, I feel like this is a bad batch joke. Like, Hot Toys intentionally made this defective, so any previous magnetic pieces won't attach to them. I could be wrong and it's an oversight, but I found it pretty funny. Let's move on. Echo's helmet has a very unique design, as does the rest of the Bad Batch. There are a lot of geometric designs and elements found around his helmet, as well as a substantial amount of weathering. Once you pop it off the joint, you'll notice a neck adapter hidden by a neck sleeve. This can lower or raise depending on the look you're going for with either the portrait or the helmet. With the helmet in hand, we can get a better look at the removable earpiece. Simply pull it out and store this piece safely if you plan to have Echo holding his helmet in hand. There aren't extra details hidden in it like we've seen with Boba Fett though. But I like that we're given the continuity of his appearance by making this piece modular. I could be wrong, but his helmet reminds me of his standard issue clone helmet, minus the rangefinder from his ARC Trooper days. You really can't compare this to any other trooper in your display without giving Echo's design the win. It's almost unfair. With a gray and black application and the subtle hints of red and yellow, it really makes his helmet pop that much more. In the midsection of his forehead, he's representing Clone Force 99, and it looks like he's been through quite a few battles since joining up. Anyway, I'm a fan of this design and I love the look. However, I'm still a fan of Wrecker's design, but this isn't about him today. Maybe one day.
we have yet another beautiful masterpiece designed by Viva Lai. Django Fett is the father of clones, but Viva Lai is the father of the clones we have in our collections today. Spoiler alert, this is a 10 out of 10. We just got to get that out the way now. <laughs> if you're familiar with the Clone Wars Season 7, then you know why Echo looked this way. His ghostly appearance is captured well through the paint application, and the deathly appearance is borderline creepy. All of the mech portions, including the connectors in his head, are spot on and accurate for something representing animation. Notice the detail here as we manually change the lighting. Again, something like this is truly remarkable to pull off and allow for other artists to photograph or record their work with a realistic edge. The shadows and lighting play very well with this portrait. So let's talk about how we could be nitpicky if we wanted to. I don't really care and I'm more than happy with what we have. However, the back portion of Echo's central unit isn't painted in the same yellow as it is on his ears. The ear cups also don't feature a light-up system. I'm sure this is something they may have considered, but again, I don't personally need it. I think the hardest call here is making a choice between using the helmet or his portrait. Both are phenomenal, but I feel like I'd make the choice for using the portrait when the rest of the Bad Batch are out. Regardless, this is truly a marvel and deserves so much praise for the effort. Beginning with the comma, which is indicative of Echo's Arc Trooper days, we have red pleather and a red polyester material lining the outer portion. The pouches and holster are all integrated into the comma's material, and unfortunately there isn't any wiring for posing it. The pouches found along the belt have somewhat of an animated appearance and are molded in plastic. Even though Echo's part of the Bat Batch, he's still wearing clone armor that shares similar design to his brother's. On the left arm, there's a cool design featuring what feels like pleather but some form of plastic as well. It feels like a mix. The design doesn't go all the way down to his wrist, but this may be an issue later on down the line. Only time will tell. For now, I like the appearance of it and appreciate Hot Toys going the extra mile. However, do you? Let us know down below. The left arm can be somewhat problematic. The forearm armor rides up and forces the hand off from time to time. But you can pose around it by futzing with the shoulder joint. As for the cybernetic arm, there's articulation above the elbow for additional range of motion. On the elbow itself, even more. This allows for a double jointed appearance that doesn't actually exist but works all together in unison. The utility arm isn't limited as mentioned earlier. If you'd like more range in posing, there's a break at the bicep. The neck joint isn't your basic joint seen on the 501st or the Coruscant guards either. He can look straight up or straight down depending on what you're going for. The leg articulation is only ratcheted moving forward and backwards. Laterally, there's nothing hindering movement, similar to the Coruscant guards if you have them. As for the cybernetic features, the kneecaps are on separate joints allowing for articulation. It's a seamless appearance and it looks pretty solid. Overall, you'll have a lot of fun posing Echo. He can pull off some neat ideas. To start, we have Captain Rex, Commander Cody, the Chrome Clone Trooper, the Coruscant Guard, the 501st Deluxe, Clone Wars Ahsoka, Light Side Anakin, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Grandmaster Yoda, and lastly, Clone Wars Darth Maul. In closing, Echo certainly came with a lot of accessories, some which we never saw in the Bad Batch and the Clone Wars outside of his scop link. I think it's a plus considering Hot Toys could have saved on production. However, there's still another season of the Bad Batch that hasn't aired yet, so... 
they could show up there. Getting back on topic, this is a standout figure in my display and I had a lot of fun posing him. His portrait is flawless and the hands included are perfect, even though I would have wanted fists. If you're waffling on this one, I'd say go for it. We don't know if Hot Toys will make another Echo anytime soon, even though he was a shiny and an ARC trooper. Are you willing to hold out hope? If so, let us know down below. Echo looks phenomenal next to Anakin, Rex, and with a little imagination, maybe even a death squad behind Darth Maul. No one's forcing you to make sense in your collection. For me, this release is a 9.5 out of 10. I mentioned a few complications earlier in the review, but nothing that'll make me go any lower than that. It's a wonderful piece and I'm extremely satisfied with my purchase. Before we sign off, don't forget to like the video and if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to our channel. We also have a Patreon where we share behind the scenes footage, wallpaper, and more. If you'd like to become a part of the community, check out our Discord server where you can talk with like-minded collectors. Links can be found in the description below. This is Jonathan with Boston Collectors and as always, it doesn't matter what we rate the figure. If you like it, we love it. We'll catch you on the flippity-flop.